JR, you're on. Hi everyone, hi Steve. Today I will be telling you about Guidebot. Uh, what's that thing sticking out of Guidebot? Oh, this? I was coming right to us. This is an AC current detector. What's an AC current detector? AC is alternating current. It, this detects electricity. Say you're coming back from a disaster area, there are going to be like down power lines, landmines, and so this is meant to find the down power lines. So if you go near a down power line, you can get electrocuted, and that's bad. So what this does, demonstration, oh, magic iPad. It oh, detects it. So I see it's detecting the electricity. But now, you, Steve, you might ask, well, how does the robot know that it detected? Yeah, why is that color sensor right above it? So this color sensor is um, on the mode of ambient light intensity. So what that means, it's looking for the light. Once, th when it senses this, it lights up, right? So if this sees the light, it knows, okay, it's seen a down power line, we need to back away. So this is how this front portion, which is a detection area, as I call it, works. Oh, so when you see, when it sees light, it, it goes around it? Yes, it moves back and then safely takes the um, displaced people away from the down power line. So my second question is, you said moves back. How is it supposed to steer? Good question. I was just coming to In the beginning of the video, you saw me playing with this. And you saw if I'm going to, like, turn this around. Now look carefully right here when I press these buttons. Wait. Do you see any cool things I'm happening? A little bit closer. Come a little closer. Oh, oh, so you see the little uh, disc thing spinning. No, 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 no. This is a bevel gear. And bevel gears are cool because they can turn rotations any degree. Like right now it's a 90 degree. Why did you guys choose 90 degree? Um, because that's the one available in the Lego Mind Story set. And also that's pretty useful. Okay, so how exactly is it supposed to turn with the buttons? Oh. These buttons are just sending um, power to the motor. So if I want it to turn this way, if you come a little closer, it's probably going to be hard to see. But down here, near uh, near this, so what happens is this bevel gear is attached to a spur gear right here. And that spur gear is attached to an axle. And that axle is then attached to a worm gear, which is then attached to another axle, which is attached to a rack and pinion. Now you might ask, what's a rack and pinion, right Steve? I bet that was your next question. Oh, uh, right. that's exactly what I was going to ask. A rack and pinion has two parts. The rack is the part, um, it's like a brick with teeth in it, and a pinion is a gear. And rack and pinion is um, used to make rotational um, movements <coughs> to linear movements. So we, and now uh, Steve, I, I think I know your question. Why did you use such a complicating steering mechanism, right? Exactly. Because what was happening when we didn't have this and we just had a uh, front, uh, front wheel power, now we have rear wheel drive, we had front wheel drive, but there was too much drag in the back because of all the friction from the wheels in the back. So now then we had to, we, to reduce that drag, we used made a real wheel drive and we used a rack and pinion steering mechanism. Mm. Oh, what's with the bed thing? Oh, I was, I, was, I was afraid you wouldn't ask, but you did. So, if you're running away, say you're in your pajamas, okay? Your house falls on top of you. What do you think is going to happen to some parts of your body? Um, they might break. Get damaged. Yeah, really bad stuff. So, for those people, like here's like simple injuries, you know, or like just tired. Or, or like they're just tired and they just want to walk or like broken up. But for people like broken legs or missing limbs... We built this bed, and if you would like to see it work. So this is a self-moving bed. Right now I'm pressing a button, and the demo will do it by itself. Uh, so my question is, before you were pressing that button for the steering, but now you're pressing it for the bed. It's two different programs. We have a steering address to make the wheel straight at the end of the program for the next demo, and then we have the bed address. The bed address is because if the bed doesn't go down at the end of the program, the, if we restart, it's going to break. Because if I try to move it up more, oh, up more, you hear the sound? It's not a good sound. 
if you keep doing that, it's going to break. Because see here, look right here. See how it's going out and coming in? If you make, if you force it to go in too far, you might break this piece. Oh, uh, so I was just noticing something down here. It is this little, little thing over here, and I don't know what it's called. It's what? like this thing. What? Here. This? Oh, this is my favorite piece. This is called a universal joint. And what does that do? A universal joint is a joint that can go all the way around 360. You can go anywhere, kind of like how your elbow can do that, but it's way, but it's way more flexible. Way cooler, I think. That's my favorite piece. And you, you're asking, why is it attached to this piece? Because this universal joint is spinning this piece, and if it's spinning in, it will it will tighten this, and will, the bed will come up. And if it's spinning out, it will loosen it, and the bed will go down. That is very clever. So. What did you learn while building Guybot? So we learned about three things. The first thing we learned about was electromagnetism. We learned about electromagnetism for two reasons. First, we learned about it to know how our detectors work. The second thing, uh, the second reason we learned about electromagnetism is because electromagnetism is the main uh, force in um, motors. The second thing we learned about was um, gear mechanisms. I talked about four gear mechanisms used in uh, Guidebot. I uh, in the, when I was talking about the steering, bevel, spur, worm, and rack and pinion. The last thing we learned about was gear ratio. Gear ratio is the ratio of teeth in a um, following a follower gear to a driver gear. The driver gear is the gear that's attached to the motor. The follower gear is the gear that's attached to the driver gear. So. Um, I hope you liked this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, thank you. The subscribe button is right down there, I think. Somewhere down there. It's Kay. either here or there. Bye. Bye.